three, two, one. Okay, welcome to Linux Fest 2024, a uh, presentation on Mastodon and the Fediverse, decentralized social networking and services. Let's take it away. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, we will uh, take, have quite time for question and answers at the end. Um, if uh, there is anything that's really important during the time, we can interrupt, but we'll, let's go ahead and get going. Uh, so starting off with uh, Mastodon, so first of all, welcome to the Linux Fest from Northwest, as you said. Um, I am a engineering manager over at uh, Rackspace, and I am hiring. So if you've got uh, anybody who wants system in or database background, uh, let me know in the US or India. All right. Uh, places to find me an hour from now, well, a little bit less than an hour from now, right in here, this room, uh, I will be talking about JQ and JSON. Uh, and then also, uh, in addition to, to being able to make it to Linux Fest Northwest on occasion, um, remotely this time again, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Siegel is organizing for our November conference. Uh, so if you'd like to help out with a, a great conference in Seattle, please let us know. Uh, and they are also on site uh, today, even though I'm not. All right. Um, so I've never needed to do a content warning for any of my talks, um, but, uh, well, actually I have. I t should take that back. I've got one I should have. But since we're talking about Fediverse and content warnings are actually kind of uh, critical to how we work, I thought I'd throw that in here. Um, there will be, it's not in the slides, but there will be mention of death due to cancer. Um, and for, I'm a huge death metal fan, so I couldn't leave out the death metal ha hashtag, right? Um, and uh, so we'll get to that as we come in. And we'll also talk briefly about co what content warnings are and uh, how important they are for us. All right. First of all, welcome to the Fediverse. Uh, this is a amalgamation of the words of FE from iron and diverse. Uh, not really, but we're going to go with it for this presentation because I wanted to have fun. Um, so, uh, but it is actually important because diverse is critical to the Fediverse. Um, and then also today's presentation is Craig Maloney. Um, we lost to cancer a couple weeks ago. I'll get back to that. All right. So, Effie, the iron part, the metal. Who are we? So, Craig is a huge fan of, of death metal. Um, in fact, he had the Open Metal Cast uh, uh, podcast, uh, which is great. If you ever do subscribe to it, I do uh, suggest you look at your settings uh, because uh, the first time I listened to an episode, uh, the speed metal was really fast. I was like, holy crap, things have changed since I first list, li last listened to this. I, I still had my, my uh, podcast player on one and a half speed. So <laughs> when I slowed it down to normal speed, speed metal was still fast, but not not, not that fast. Anyway, um, on the Fediverse, though, uh, aside from just Craig, we can get loud, we can get into heavy topics. It's a social network, right? We talk about things that we talk about. Humans are humans, right? We have divergent interests, opinions, hot takes, memes. We don't all get along, but we, we uh, uh, work together, all right? Uh, so pumping iron, we have only the most beautiful people in the Fediverse, but not really this type of th thing, more like this type of thing. Uh, RuPaul is a, is a good example for us. We have a very strong LGBTQ plus community within the Fediverse, hence the diverse that I was talking about earlier. Uh, in fact, a good portion of our Fediverse tools have been created by trans, people who wanted to build a safe space for them to be able to uh, communicate online. Uh, Craig, I mentioned him, so I want to go ahead and give a short intro to who he was. Craig was a member of the, Fed member of the Fediverse before the Fediverse started. Uh, he was a stalwart member of MUG, the Michigan user group, um, which has a strong uh, regular monthly online uh, presentation. So if you'd like to participate in those, I believe they're the second Tuesday. Uh, Mid-afternoon for those of us that are all the way on, over on the left coast. Um, and then uh, he was a leading member of the Pepper and Carrot community. Uh, for those of, their, of you that are a fan of David Roy and his comics. Uh, he was a persistent mem member of the Floss and Open Culture community, which is where I met him. Uh, podcaster, I mentioned Open Pod uh, Metalcast. And he was a Rush fan, which is another one of the reasons that he and I got to know each other over time. What is the Fediverse, though? The Fediverse is what we make of it. It's the people we meet, the people who create it, the people who run it, right? So it is a social organization. Yes, we need the software. And thank you to the developers, or to Oregon and Dan and the other ones that are creating the software that we're using. Um, thanks to the people who are running it. We will talk about uh, those and how important moderators are. But it is, in the end, it is what we, the people who are on it, 
make of it, right? Just like Linux Fest Northwest, Linux Fest Northwest is a volunteer run organization, right? That this this conference is what the people who are participating make of it, right? Those who are working year round or however long Linux Fest work, Northwest works for organizing it, who go through and make make accommodations for the room and for a place for for those of us that can't be on site can can participate. Making a place for those of you that are attending can, can show up, but also a place for those of us that are presenting. And yes, I'm presenting, I'm, I'm creating something for the, for the conference. But those of you who are there, even if you're not, you're not presenting, you're still part of the conference. The conference is what we make of it, right? The Fediverse is a raw social organization. It is one of the most, most uh, direct examples of it is what we make it. All right. Uh, Fediverse ex ex description. So the way I describe it is a, it's a coalition of decentralized, decentralized, interoperable digital social spaces. It is not just one thing. It is many things. This is this is the free software side of things, right? We go through and create your own. We can go we and work together, right? Um, and in order to have a a good so to me a good social environment, you need to have something where you can have local rules and local control of things, or you can have specific interests, um, but you can't create one uh, environment that will work for everybody. So what you need to do is in, instead have multiple environments that can talk to each other, right? So the features and options, we have many providers with local control. You join an instance and, and you that, that instance has local control over what happens on that particular instance. <coughs> there is no centralized authority. Right? You don't have to ask a particular person for, for permission, and we're not dependent on a particular entity. Right? If any one entity in the Fediverse goes away today for some reason, um, then uh, whether it be short term or, or permanent, the Fediverse will continue trucking along. We're fine. Right? You can interact with other services. So the no centralized authority requires you to be able to interact with other services, because otherwise you end up with a centralized piece. Uh, to me, it's also important that we can run your own, right? In the free software community, we have a lot of host, uh, self-hosting uh, people in, in our group. Um, you're not required to, to host your own, but you can. Um, and and uh, um, there's reasons not to do it for most people, but you can if you want to. Uh, and then uh, key for me is an unfiltered timeline. Now, I don't mean unfiltered as in you can't block stuff out. I mean unfiltered as in the uh, the the uh, uh, services are not going through and using an algorithm to decide what you get. You're getting what you get in the order that was sent to you, right? Uh, so the what you get in your on your timeline is what you subscribe to. If you don't want to see it, if you see somebody, don't subscribe, subscribe to them. Block them, right? Be, be useful of that. Um, now, does that mean we can't have algorithms? No, we can have algorithms, but they should be opt-in, right? You choose to have that algorithm. and and. The, for those that want to get pedantic, yes, we have an algorithm. It is first in, first out, right? FIFO, that's the default algorithm. But that's the way it should be for, for things. Um, we can then in, uh, add filters. I use filters on, on uh, my, my uh, Fediverse stuff all, the, all over the place. Uh, if I don't, it's just too much content, right? Uh, but keys for us are we have many providers and many services. Uh, oh, I fixed this slide last night, but I guess I unfixed it. All right, this is an unofficial Fediverse logo. So somebody proposed this. And as I say, the Fediverse doesn't really exist as a um, as an entity unto itself where there's nobody going through and, and telling us what's on there. So um, uh, hold on a second, we're doing... There we go. Uh, hold on, so reset. There we go. Try to keep, keep track of my time. Um, so... We, there's nobody that says what it is. Oregon created Mastodon, which we'll talk about, but Oregon doesn't get, get to decide what's on, what is on the Fediverse. He just he doesn't even get to decide what's on Mastodon. He gets to decide what goes into the main code base, but there are forks, right? So even there, he doesn't exert full control over any any huge portion of the Fediverse, right? Um, the Fediverse depends on Activity Pub, which was created by another entity, and, and then Oregon and others have, have adopted that. So there's no one group that controls it, but this is this was proposed, and in general we've liked it. Um, it is showing rainbow thing for for diversity, right? We have many people, many places, lots of countries all over the world participating. 
Um, and then we have uh, interoperability between nodes. Uh, the one thing that, that does, it doesn't show here is this possibility to not have a connection between nodes. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Who am I? Uh, okay. Most, time, most of the time I don't do too much of this, but this is a social, social uh, 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 presentation. So I figured I should go into a little bit who I am. I'm a privacy advocate. Uh, my first talk for a Linux Fest for Northwest uh, years and years ago was for how to use a password manager uh, so that you could have better privacy for and, and control your own privacy on third party sites. Um, uh, I am a free software advocate, again, password manager. <laughs> so I hate both of those technologists, hit that as well. I'm a spouse, I'm a parent. I'm a volunteer, a school volunteer. I, I run uh, uh, stuff, I help with stuff with my kid's school. Uh, and then I'm a Rush fan. And uh, that's important in this particular case because, again, the connection with, with Craig and some of the other connections I have on the Fediverse. Um, but also truly explains who I am. I, I had a new boss at work. Uh, she's like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm a Linux geek and I'm a Rush fan, and that explains it all. She has agreed with me in the uh, year and a half since then. All right. History of Federation. I'm not going to list all the, read all these things out, but we've been around for a long time. Usenet, email, IRC, those are all examples of Federation as well. If, you know, depending on how we would want it to go through and, and, and define it. And I think that they are precursors to where we are today. But the Fediverse, as we started, really started with uh, status.net. Um, and uh, that was from Evan P. He created that and got it up and running. He then moved over to Identica, same person, same group behind it. Um, and uh, those are really what I think, uh, what we think of today as the Fediverse, where those started as a you know, web-based, um, graphical uh, place for people to post and, and, and communicate. Uh, very much learned from the previous things, but that's that's kind of where we are today. Uh, and Craig was around for those, right? Craig was was a participant of, uh, back then as well. We had Media Goblin. Uh, Media Goblin is, is extra important because we'll talk. Uh, uh, Christine Lemmer Weber will come up, but Christine Lemmer Weber was one of the people behind Media Goblin, uh, and then also uh, with the Activity Pub. Uh, when I get back down to that, uh, uh, Evan created Pump IO, uh, and then we started getting some other stuff. He started working on the Activity Pub working group for the W3C, uh, brought in Christine Lummer Weber and others, and they created a standard and got it published and accepted, and that became the activity pub standard that, as I say, then Oregon uh, adopted. Uh, Mastodon had already started before activity pub was published, um, and Oregon uh, went through and adopted the activity pub standard for, not for every part of the conversation, but for server to server, which is the important part. So now other servers can co contact, uh, uh, talk to each other. So not just Mastodon to Mastodon, but uh, pixel fed to Mastodon, PeerTube to Mastodon, Mastodon, pixel fed and, and PeerTube and to, to the other things because they're using a common, common communication standard. Uh, so what is Mastodon? It is a decentralized social media. It's a microblogging service. We can post up to 500 characters. So you're not putting long treatises in there. As I say, there are forks of Mastodon, and there are some that allow longer connections. Uh, all right, hold on. Uh, sorry, I've got it plugged in, and it's telling me I'm about to run out of battery. So let me try something else here. Okay, that made it go away. All right, good. Uh, so, um, it's limited to 500 characters, uh, but uh, there are forks that allow longer characters. You can also, of course, reply to yourself and, and have longer treatises on there. So, a thread. There are uh, plenty of people do that. Um, but it's a feed of microblogging posts. Uh, you can kind of think of it as an RSS feed with a little bit extra controls. In fact, it's available as an RSS feed as well, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit when we get to... Uh, um, uh, privacy, and it's free software. So Oregon created an, an, under a free software license. So the and it's uh, uh, so those forks are also free software, uh, and which I think is important for something like this because then we can go through and audit the code. And am I capable of auditing the code? No, technically I could possibly do it. Maybe. Time-wise, I definitely don't have time for it. But there are others people that do. And as I say, there are others that are making forks of it. And they're going through and inspecting the code so that we shouldn't have any surprises in there. All right. Uh, description that comes out of uh, Wikipedia. 
Uh, the important part to me is the users are in control. Again, we make of the Fediverse what we want to make of the Fediverse. Uh, and then we also uh, delicious chocolate marshmallow cookies. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a product that comes along that uh, I found shortly after joining the Fed Fediverse and Mastodon. Uh, and it was Mastodon and it's yummy. So I, I bring those. Uh, and again, I fixed that slide, but all right. Uh, samples Fediverse services. Social network. Right, so Mastodon and, and things like that for microblogging, uh, image sharing. That's Pixel Fed. I'll bring them up a couple times. Video sharing, sharing peer tube. Uh, there's a book club, right? So you can get on and, and work as a, as a group to go through and read a book and and, and talk about it and uh, post up uh, uh, reviews. Uh, bloggings for full size blogging. Uh, there's also for file sharing. In fact, uh, Nextcloud uh, is this one of the things that it's doing with the Fediverse is is allowing that for for sh file sharing. Uh, audio hosting, uh, link aggregator for those that wanted to use that. Uh, recently, uh, Framasoft has gone through and created an event and group management uh, tool. There's a couple of others that have been around as well. Uh, and then uh, live video streaming. So what the things that we like to do on the internet that might have a social component, we're getting Fediverse services for those. Uh, building the Fediverse. So I, I'm going to use some specific uh, terminology during this talk. This talk, I've already used it a couple times, but I want to go through and, and uh, explain what they are. So when I say service, I mean a particular type of service. With, so in particular, you can think of it as uh, protocol or however you want to think, but Mastodon or Pixel Fed. So Mastodon is uh, uh, running a microblogging service. Pixel Fed is doing a picture sharing a, uh, a service. And that's that's where we um, uh, go through. Um, there are other microblogging things. Go to social is trying to make a, a try to get ready for for uh, use there in alpha right now, which is also microblogging. So I would count Mastodon and go to sir, uh, social as right, uh, different services, but they are um, doing. They're both microblogging. Let's see if this work. All right. Hold on a second. This is gonna. Having the net, the the uh, laptop go down mid presentation will be ungood. All right, let's see if that fixes it. Come on, what is going on here? We do lose you. It was great, uh, great to have. You. Yeah, and uh, join back in when you can. Yeah. Uh, why is this it's plugged in? It is. Oh, yeah. This is the first time I've had this problem with this laptop. I'm sure I get power here. I get power there. Let's see if it's. Do you see? I shouldn't have to flip it over. But I'm down just a couple of seconds here. Uh, and then an instance is the particular service that you're running. So if you're on floss.social, for instance, as a Mastodon's instance, that would be the, the place. Um, or um, uh, pixelfed.social. It's plugged in. It's on the high power ports. Oh, no, it's on. No, it's on. Okay, well, yes. I'm on a, uh, oh, you know, that might be what it is. I was expecting to get it from the hub. That's not. I'm on a framework, so I have four USB-C ports to choose from. And none of them were taking power. Ended up charging overnight too. I guess it did not do well enough. Side cable. Uh. While well, you're uh, you're working on that, yeah. I mean, in in the spirit of the talk, Mastodon is a, 
centralized uh, network? Is, do we want to turn it into a community discussion, like what people are doing for uh, with with Mastodon? That's what you were looking for out of this. Um, yeah, go ahead and do that. And uh, Links Fest Northwest has an account, and I'll I'll link it out later on. But yeah, go ahead and talk about different groups that are, that are on there. That'd be fantastic. Cool. All right. I've done it a few times, and then you know, going sporadically, but never. Nice. How do we become publishers? Like, if I have content and I expose things on Mastodon, what would I do? Uh, so I think the general uh, thing is, is look at, there's like a, an index of servers that have been installed. So with maintainers, and everyone is independent. They have, uh, you know, slightly different um, moderation guidelines. Um, I think like there's mastodon.social is a large one that started, um, but there's plenty of ones to, uh, to choose. You create a, an account on there, and then it's essentially like a mini uh, uh, oh, okay. bird site. Uh, that was that you can uh, post to, uh, or I think they call them toots. Um, yeah. Uh, and then if somebody is following you and, and uh, the two server hosts are connected in a, in a federated uh, environment, then people who are subscribed to you are going to be able to see posts. Uh, and then there's, sure. there's uh, indexing that happens with, uh, with hashtags. Okay, I appear to be uh, loading again. Oops. Are you working? Oh. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so I actually wasn't going to mention tweets, but we'll, since you brought it up, we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Um, so somebody early on had uh, uh, convinced Oregon, said that they would donate some money or something like that, if you would call it tweets, playing on tweets. Um, and uh, Oregon did not know that it has two different meanings in English. It was like, sure, whatever, right? And, and uh uh, he'd already chosen the name Mastodon because he's a fan of the band Mastodon. Um, so, uh, and he thought of Toot as being the noise that an elephant makes. Uh, so, uh, with, with that, uh, I tend to use posts. Uh, part of it is because when I'm talking about the Fediverse, uh, a pixel fed post isn't a Toot, it's a, it's something else, right? And I'm not going to go memorize what they all call them. So I'll just call them posts, right? I've been doing that for decades because like Craig, I've been on all of these as well. <laughs> So um, yeah, uh, back to where I was at. Uh, so you choose an instance. So the instance is a particular server, uh, 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 server service that you're connecting to. Um, and as I say, uh, Frost.Social, uh, 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 Fostodon, um, Mastodon.Social is available. It's the biggest. Uh, there's, Oregon is running two. We generally recommend not using those because we don't want to get uh, one or two instances that has most of the people on the, uh, even on Mastodon, much less, you know, or on the on the federal versus, but it's even on just Mastodon. Um, so find a different uh, uh, host to go through and host on. Um, one of the cool things, and I'll, I'll bring this up in a, in a couple of slides, um, is, is Oigan actually actively uh, encourages people to go somewhere else. So, all right. Uh, so cast iron. Uh, so so this was this was casting. Um, developers create the software that drives the Fediverse. We are uh, in debt to them, and so I, I do want to say thank you and give them credit for it. Uh, if it worked for Oregon, if it worked for Dan, if it worked for the people that are helping them out, if it worked for the people behind the other uh, um, services, we wouldn't have something to run. So obviously the software is important. We're free, we're at a free software conference. We recognize that the software is an important co component of the technology. Right. Uh, and then also, this is I've, I've mentioned David David Ravoy and uh, Pepper and Carrot. This was a live uh, uh, art thing that he did for Penguin Con a couple of years ago, uh, and uh, was taking suggestions from the audience. And eventually, we came up with Penguin Wizard, and uh, and this is what he he drew for us during the session. All right, Federalist is community. I've already covered that a bunch of things. This is part of my Penguin community. Uh, that I've got. I, my, it is too large, but it's still smaller than Jill's for those of you who listen to Destination Linux. All right, Pixel Fed. I've mentioned this. Uh, this is for photo sharing. So Dan is not a software developer, or wasn't. He just thought, hey, this would be kind of cool to do, and started creating Pixel Fed. Um, I don't know if, that's his, if this is his full time job yet, um, but he's been doing amazing uh, work for years, going through and creating a photo sharing environment for us to use. Um, and also for uh, 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 
anyway, but once you PixelFed is also using ActivityPub, so you can follow a PixelFed account from Mastodon. You can follow a Mastodon account from PixelFed. Uh, there's still some. Last I was looking at it, some, still some bugs getting worked out with it, but it is it is there. Um, and I want to thank Dan for the, the effort he's put in. His site, the, the pixelfed.org uh, that I mentioned earlier, is the uh, you know main, uh, not the main site, but the, the example site from the person that created it. Uh, but he actively encourages you to go elsewhere. In fact, he often locks out PixelFed. I think it's generally locked out, so you can't create new accounts on that main site. He's trying to get you to go somewhere else. Um, that has been a uh, theme I've seen for uh, most of the federal uh, federal site uh, or services. Um, for Dan, I'm certain it's also financial because it costs money to host all that all those pictures and stuff. Um, but even without the financial, uh, he recognizes that we will the the Fediverse will be stronger and more diverse if we have more hosters and, and uh, don't have just a centralized service. Uh, PeerTube is for uh, sharing uh, videos. So hopefully the videos that are coming from Linux Fest Northwest will find their way onto a PeerTube account uh, so that we can be sharing uh, our videos via free software and again via something that's tied into the uh, Fediverse. Uh, I mentioned Framosoft earlier. Uh, so it's a small company in France uh, that has been using contractors to go through and build uh, free software tools for us. They've built a couple of uh, Fediverse uh, tools, PeerTube and their uh, event sharing uh, being the primary things. Uh, they, but they've been doing a lot of stuff in free software for years and years and years. So I thank them for the uh, what they're doing. And then they sponsor uh, a lot of conferences in Europe. Being in France, that's that's more close closer from that. All right, privacy and security resources in your own, your own hands. This slide isn't isn't just Fediverse. I mean, this is normal things. Use Firefox. Use Firefox containers so you can isolate things. Uh, if you have multiple uh, Fediverse accounts and Mastodon accounts, like I do, by using containers, I can keep those isolated from each other within a with a browser. Um, data liberation. Uh, we have ways of exporting your data. They're not as good as they need to be. Last I looked at it, we still can't do a diff. Yeah, I did an export last week. What's changed since then? I have to do a full do full download every time. Um, uh, I'm certain on the back end that is far less complex, uh, but I would save a lot of data, you know, a lot of bandwidth if I, if I wasn't downloading my entire history every time. Uh, but you can take copies of it, and you can take copies of it from one service and move them to another service. It's not as easy as it needs to be, and it's not as, as complete as it needs to be, uh, but we're actually working with it. and. Uh, to, to a large extent, it's in our, our best interest to make that uh, avail, uh, possible. You can hide your social graph. So when you're following somebody else and somebody else is following you, that can be public or it can be hidden so that other people can't see it. Your followers, I think, would still be able to see who your followers are. But you can limit who those are. You can allow followers only on approval. And you can also then, uh, and then as I said, you can you can publicly hide your social graph so people can't see who you're connected to. Uh, I'm doing free software stuff. I'm I'm active in the community, so I I don't worry about that too much. But I'm glad we have it because I know people that need it. Uh, and for all you know, I have accounts that are like that where I'm not coming joining the uh, Feta versus me. I'm joining the Feta versus as uh, something else, uh, a, a different account. And I'm wanting that to stay hidden for some reason. I actually do some testing accounts I've done that way, but I didn't hide my social graph for those. But there might be other reasons why I want to be able to hide my social graph uh, for uh, things that I'm doing. Um, all right. Uh, opt out uh, search engine indexing. So search en en engine indexing has been, um, I need to change this because they changed it again. Uh, this is Mastodon specific. But he added a, uh, um, well, actually, I take that back. There's two, two different pieces. So uh, hashtags get indexed. The rest of the text does not get indexed under normal circumstances. And you can opt out of that. So that if you use, so for instance, if I use hashtag LFNW2024 uh, in my post, like I did last night for this talk, then that, in, that post will get indexed under that keyword. I can opt out of it so that it doesn't get indexed. They've also since added a full text index, uh, which they did not, uh, Oigen did not do for the longest time because it didn't want it. 
um, but they would finally it wouldn't add it because so many people were asking for it. Um, but that one is an opt-in. He started off was going to be just everybody gets it. There were a lot of complaints where people said, no, I don't want to have to opt out of that. I'm doing this. I don't want to be normal indexed. So the default should be not to index everything that I've posted. And so you instead need to go and update your account to opt in for that. Uh, so we're thinking about privacy all the way. And that doesn't mean we always make the right decisions uh, as, a, as a group. It doesn't make, mean we make the, the decisions that you would specifically and individually want. But in general, we're looking at privacy, we're considering privacy, and we're trying to protect privacy, even though this is a, a public social service. Right? Uh, <coughs> if you're concerned about your post being public uh, or a specific post being public, be aware of RSS feeds. Go research on your own. Uh, if it's changed since the last time I looked at it, I don't know. So go research on your own. Make sure you're happy with what RSS feeds are doing. But they're generally more public than even uh, uh, other talks. Uh, and there are a few companies on the Fediverse. That's changing a little bit, but most of the companies are like Framersoft. They're free software companies. Uh, but we have less companies that are trying to index all of our information and take our information and use it against us. Um, We'll, we'll probably get to something about that later on. All right, client choice. So one of the things that happened is Oregon from the beginning is like, okay, here's the, the front end that I'm creating so that you can join and, and use Mastodon, but it's highly encouraged other um, front ends, uh, whether that be for phone uh, stuff or a desktop app or web interface. Uh, he has actively gone through and encouraged other apps uh, recently, there, there was a kerfuffle because he went through and made an official uh, Apple app or something like that. I forget which, which of the phone environments it was. Uh, and people were all upset about it. But he, he goes through and still says, here's these other ones. Go use those. Right? He, he's just saying, this is the one that I'm working with. This is the one I'm testing to make sure that we're, we're in good shape. What the other group is doing, if, if they're staying up with the newest versions of the Mastodon, he doesn't control that. But for the official app, He's going through, and his, his the nonprofit that he started is paying developers to work on that. But he's still actively encouraging people to use third-party apps uh, and working with them to, help, to keep them working. Uh, you can also move to a different account. So if you've got an account on uh, Mastodon.social, and as I say, it's huge, and we're trying to encourage people to move to other smaller services, uh, you can move to another service. You want to move to Floss.social, you can go through and take your pick up your account and move it over. Your followers will, will go with you. Not everything moves with you. Uh, again, we're, we're working on it. Hopefully someday we'll get there. Uh, and of course you can delete your account, which is not necessarily the case on other services. Uh, and for those of us that do not have GDPR, even if you delete your account on those other services, they don't delete your data. And they will continue using it against you for as long as they want to. All right, big iron. Going, going back to that, uh, that iron and diverse a theme that I started early on. System wins, keep the services up and running. I'm a system man, this is my background. So of course I gotta give my, my people credit, right? Um, so this is this is important for us because we do have all these services running all over the place on a worldwide network. Um, so uh, thanks to the, the people who are doing that work. Uh, in the Fediverse, we give a lot of credit to our, our moderators. I'm gonna go heavy on that in, in, a, in a second. Um, but our system ends are important as well. So thank you to those that are doing the technology, uh, keeping the network up and going, uh, whether that be running our service or running the infrastructure that our service runs on. Right? Uh, I need the network people that are keeping the network up and running as well. All right, Bedrock, moderators, as I said, I'm gonna get to them. So they are the backbone of the Fediverse. Moderators are uh, truly key to us being able to function uh, and, and not just become uh, uh, the loudest noise. Right? We want to be a social network, not a screaming network. So uh, moderators go through and they take, if you, if you ever go through and, and uh, uh, report abuse, that's going to the moderators. It can be going to the moderators on your local instance. It can also be going to moderators on the remote instance if the, the, the post that you're uh, reporting is from a different instance. Right? So and you, when, you, when you make that uh, report, you can choose which way to go. We generally recommend it go to both so that uh, your local instance can help uh, with, with uh, uh, blocking that content if it needs to be on your local instance. 
but also so that that remote instance mod the remote instance moderators know that there's an account that's that's be having some problems, right? Um, it, it takes a lot of moderators to get going. Think about it. We've got 24-7 services running, uh, and they have uh, a lot of different ones. So you can't have, you don't have one moderator controlling all of the different instances. Um, and uh, moderators need to sleep too, so please be, be aware of that. Most of the instances I know of try to have 24-7 teams. People are volunteering their time on weekends, nights and, and, nights and weekends in order to help out. Uh, so when you, if you do contact them, please be polite to the moderators, right? They are, they are helping us out. They're customer service, right? Please be polite to them. Uh, they have the hardest job in the Fediverse and any other digital community. They see things, lots of things that the rest of us are glad we don't see because they've gone through and blocked that out for us. Uh, because there are bad actors on, on the, the Fediverse, joining the Fediverse just to be jerks, right? Um, so there are, they are seeing things in there. There are disagreements that might not really necessarily be abuse, but moderators still not, sometimes need to get involved in order to calm things down a little bit so it doesn't get to abuse. Or if things get out of hand and it does get to abuse, now they get involved, right? So uh, there is a lot of things that they're doing the rest of us don't see because they are helping keep the Fediverse up and running and keeping things on a good social uh, uh, environment basis for us, right? Help them out. Use content warnings. I'll talk about content warnings some more. But this, if you're posting something that might be controversial or might be triggering for somebody, um, even if you don't think it's necessarily triggering, think about the Everybody in the world can see your post. Would other people, especially a large group of other people, consider what you're, you're posting to be triggering? So that's why I had the content warning early on about death and cancer. For some people, that is a problem, right? Um, now, also, though, keep in mind that we, we should not be asking people to uh, put content warnings about who they are. Um, so I will talk about accessibility in a, in a second. Uh, where we we have a strong culture of trying to have alt tags for our, our images. Well, when somebody that has visual issues is is posting about the fact that they can't see these pictures, they don't they shouldn't have to put up a content warning about that. That's that's their experience that they're having. Um, so keep that in mind, right? Uh, be liberal in what you accept and be uh, 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 strict in what you send. Right? Is is uh, the the thing I've seen along for services for years and years and years. So use content warnings if you think that something might be triggering for somebody else or a large group of other people. And then also report abuse. If you see abuse that you, th you think is absolutely not allowed on your, on your instance, please do report it. Don't just ignore it. Do go ahead and, and, and report it. Be polite to the, <laughs> to the moderators when you do it. Though. All right. Uh, moderation for your Fediverse. Now, how do you, as a person that's on the Fediverse, get moderation? How, how does it come, come to, to what you're seeing in your feed, right? So one is your local instance moderators, the, whatever instances you're on. So I'm on uh, floss.social. Um, my local moderators are who my first uh, 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 level of uh, control over what's going, showing up on my instance. Um, but I'm also dependent on what the local instance rules are, right? The best example I have for that, uh, which is, is just glorious example, counter example. There's a poetry uh, uh, instance that does not allow, allow the letter E. You're not allowed to post with the letter E. You can't use the number three as, an, as a thing for it. You're just not allowed to post with the letter E as a challenge for the people on that, that instance. So if somebody posts and accidentally has an E somewhere in there, uh, for instance, if they use the, even if they left out the E and just put TH, that still counts, right? So if they do that, that should go to the your local instance moderators to 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 um, uh, go through and uh, enforce your local rules, right? Um, now, somebody as a counterexample that that set up dolphins that town where you're only allowed to po post the letter E, so all of the posts look like uh, longer or shorter sentences from dolphins, hence dolphins that town. Uh, it's glorious. Go check it out. All right. Uh, you have instance-wide blocks and filters. So if you've got an instance that has is having a problem, for instance, that poetry instance might just block dolphins.town. <laughs> you know, they might laugh. 
and might not be upset about it. I hope they laughed and were not upset about it. I hope they thought it was 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 hilarious. Um, but they should probably block that because it is explicitly posting only the thing that they disallow, right? Uh, so you can block at the instance. You can filter at the instance, right? Uh, you can say, well, maybe the dolphins occasionally allow uh, uh, whales to come in and they only post an O. Mm, I don't know. Uh, so they would allow those posts. Uh, you know. uh, use content warnings. Yeah, that, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but um, mm -hmm. we'll have uh, uh, that. We want to have, give 10 minutes for people to get to their next uh, session. If uh, we can okay. transition to uh, question and answer, or if there's a, how do we get in touch with you and continue this discussion? Yeah, uh, so my, my uh, uh, Mastodon account is down at the bottom of the slides. I'm Floss under bar advocates on uh, floss.social. Right. Okay, sorry, I thought I had the full hours. It's pushing through, but yeah, uh, the, sorry about the delays at the beginning. All right. Let me see if, let me go through and, and skip. If they do have any questions while I'm skipping through it to see if there are any particular sites I want to point out. Uh, actually, uh, if you follow the about on a Mastodon instance, it'll take you to the local rules for your local instance, which is important. And you can look at those before you join an instance. Okay. Uh, we like alt ta text. Uh, this is a quote down at the bottom from Oigan. Uh, again, he does, he's, he doesn't want everybody joining just mass, just joining Mastodon so, not social. Uh, okay. Uh, self hosting, you can choose your own moderators uh, and you can have your own local rules. So if, you know, we got places that want adult content. Uh, but one of the things you can have an internal only. So you could run your own instance that doesn't have to federate with the rest of the Fediverse. All right. Moderation is a lot of work. Uh, all right. We still have problems on the Fediverse. People are people, uh, but we're doing our best to try to keep it uh, uh, safe for everybody and uh, uh, keep it uh, uh, agreeable. All right. Takes a lot of work. Uh, do we have any questions coming in? Some examples. Cool. Like I'm just, I'm just mystified as to like the basics of it. I'm just like, if I wanted to do one simple thing, like post a photo or post a post, what do I do? Great. So both of those can happen on Mastodon. So uh, for photos, you could go to PixelFed, but if you want, you know, you can also do photos on Mastodon. So I would say go to join Mastodon. Uh, it's got tools there to help you find an instance, that, choose an instance. Um, you're a free software person if you're Linux West Northwest, or there's a decent chance for that. So you might look at floss.social and see if uh, that'll work for you. Create an account and start posting. Um, when you when you get on there, you've you've got it by default. It gives you a feed of what's going on on the instance, but just start following accounts that you th think are interesting or following hashtags that you think are interesting. You can unfollow them if you change your mind. Right? Just start clicking things. Is there an API? Nice way to play with stuff. I do all this is there, as an end user and I'm just typing everything in or is it, can I write to it as a service? I, yeah, so it's got front ends, front end clients. You get the default as a web client, but you can also do a desktop client. It does have an API if you want to write your own. Uh, Craig did. He actually wrote a command line tool so he could go through and, and use it from command line. Um, and it has an API so you can connect up via API, um, but uh, you can just use a client's uh, for it. Would it be for Mastodon or for the Fediverse? Uh, so there, there. Um, Join Mastodon is for Mastodon itself. If you're looking for the Fediverse. Uh, this top line here for Feta Tips, uh, that is somebody that's doing a lot of work to go through and uh, give us information and guides and uh, suggestions for the Fediverse in general. 
Uh, I enjoy the, their posts to Mastodon, but they're they're uh, not restricted only to Mastodon. Uh, okay, and then so uh, as I say, Craig was great. All right, uh, that's there. Let me put it. Leave this up, and in the end, um, any other questions? All right. Nope. I'll, I'll presume everybody is changing rooms. Um, I have power again. I'm going to go ahead. I am. My the next talk in this room is is me, same law. Uh, uh, I am going to be talking about uh, an introduction introduction to JQ, uh, which is a query tool for JSON documents. Uh, I'm going to be specifically talking about. I'm, I've got it basically as a three part uh, series, three different presentations. This is my first presentation where I'm kind of going doing the grep of what you do. If you think of grep set and awk and other uh, command line tools that do line based uh, uh, work. Uh, I, we can use JQ to do all of that for document-based work in JSON documents. Awesome. I'm going to stop this recording and then we can resume in a, in a little while. Okay.